What's up, people? I am back. We're doing basically the last Shrek movie. Not to me, this is not canon, but... Because I still have to review it technically, but... I'm doing Shrek Forever After, and then we're going to do the Puss in Boots movies, which I cannot wait to do Last Wish. Last Wish, in my opinion, I'm going to go off about it really quick. Easily one of the best animated movies in, fuck, almost over a decade, I'd say. <laughs> this one was great. So anyway, I can't wait to do that one. And the first Puss in Boots was decent. It's definitely better than this. Because Shrek Forever After... This was one I didn't see when it came out. I think at that point I was, I don't know, I was kind of aged out of like animated movies at that point because this was 2010. I was going into high school and yeah, I don't know. I just kind of got out of the habit of uh, watching animated movies. So, but overall, so I didn't end up seeing this one. I just, and then, and I never really rewatched the movies anyway, and I just never got around to four. So I watched it for the first time last night or yesterday. It just isn't good. I'm. It's not good. <laughs> I, I the story. Okay, the basically the plot is Shrek is basically bitter at his current life now because he's no longer seen as scary. His house is now like a a, a tourist attraction. He's not seen as scary anymore, and he wants kind of his life back, but it's almost a character destruction. I was thinking about this, like, earlier, like, why would Shrek think, like, it was a, this whole plot just feels contrived because we needed to have a fourth movie. Because, if I'm being honest, the third one ends it really good. Like, King Arthur becomes king, Shrek ends up having a family. I didn't really need to see that in a movie. Because I knew, and I also feel like the humor is very dragged out in this one. The humor, I'm not saying was like some sophisticated shit, but it, and you didn't have your moments of, you know, I guess like if you want to call it like Three Stooges humor where it's like fart jokes, people just fall in a lot, stuff like that. But I feel like this one just leaned into it too much and there was just no, I didn't feel like any of the jokes really landed. Um, the plot, like that's why I was saying could try because it's like we need a fourth movie so we're going to make it like Shrek all of a sudden hates his life and doesn't want to so wait he doesn't like fiona now like it just felt so contrived to me so he decides to sign a deal with rumple who if the movie starts with um lillian and king harold trying to sign the deal originally they were going to sign the deal with rumple but then it gets canceled out when fiona ends up falling in love and that's to where we are now so he get rumple convinces shrek to sign the contract Shrek gets his life back, but then and everything goes to shit. And it's just so predictable. I like I was that's like one of the first things I was you know, there are plots that to an extent you can kinda tell where it's going. But it's like it's so obvious. So I was like I was like at the part where he lashes out at the at his kid's birthday party. And I was like, I could already tell where this is going. He's gonna wish his life back. And then he's going to feel bad because obviously he's going to realize this isn't what he wanted. And then he's going to try to have to get Fiona back. And then he gets her back. And it's, yeah. It, I'll admit, the, there's a few positives. I do think the animation is easily the best. They they really definitely gave, they, I wouldn't be surprised if that's like whole, the whole budget went to the animation. Because the animation, it's like jarringly different compared to the other three movies. So I'll say that. The animation is really good. Um... It was cool seeing different ogres because uh, up until that point, we'd only seen Shrek and then Fiona when she's an ogre form. So it was cool seeing different types of ogres because in the, the different world, Fiona leads a group of like a basically a, a race of ogres. And she's like a warrior chick, which okay, I was okay with that. I actually didn't mind warrior Fiona, but everything else was just kind of predictable. Rumple is such a shit villain. He's easily the worst of the three, four movies for me. It's, he doesn't have anything, he's not exciting. At least with, like, Farquaad, it was John Lithgow playing him so good. Fairy Godmother was compelling. Charming was a decent villain. Even though, like I said, I don't really love three like that, but Charming was definitely one of the better positives. I, I enjoyed him as a villain. Even though he's kind of, a, he was kind of treated as a joke, but he was still decent. Just nothing, Rumpel just didn't do it for me. 
if anything, I thought the witches were far more compelling as antagonists than him. I don't know. It just, he didn't do it for me. His plan basically is just Charming's plan. He felt like he should have been rightfully king. It's the same fucking plan. Same motive. It was like, they didn't even try to do something different. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to start getting into the plot now. But yeah, easily the worst one. I probably will not watch this again. If I were to go through my Shrek rewatch, to me, there is no Shrek 4. To me, it ends at 3. And if they ever do a 5, which I, I put an Instagram in it like a bit after I saw uh, Puss in Boots' Last Wish. I was like, I would have been open to a Sh Shrek 5. I'm open to a Shrek 4 because to me, that's going to be officially Shrek 4. That's how much I do not like this movie. It's just, um, it was cool seeing Donkey and Puss in Boots, which the Puss in Boots stuff got old too. Like, is in this in that version of the world, he's fat and he's not like a like a bounty hunter like in the original. And it's just, how many times do we have to see him like slide down? Oh, he's fat, so he's gonna take him a minute. It was like fine the first time, but they did it like two or three times, and it was like, okay, it's getting old now. Donkey was cool. Um, that's about it, really. It's like only a couple of positives, but to me, this is not a good entry. It, the humor wasn't there. I, I didn't care for Rumpel as a villain. The plot's pretty weak. It feels like they just had to do something because they felt like they had to do a fourth movie because I have a feeling it's because Shrek the Third probably did decent money. So they're like, we have to do a big Greenland a fourth one. And they don't even acknowledge that Arthur was king. They almost, for, like, Arthur isn't even mentioned it's just like, oh, yeah, you, you don't even, you forgot he was king. So the movie, <laughs> basically, I do like the whole, <coughs> these movies, the, <coughs> where they start off like, like you're reading a fairy tale book. <coughs> I do like that. So we <coughs> see King Harold and Lillian want to decide they have no choice but to try to make sign a contract with <coughs> Rumpel who can it's basically like a wish thing like <coughs> you sign this thing and <coughs> whatever you want can be made to happen and what they want is that basically for <coughs> for uh, Fiona to get I think married slash like basically the curse going away and they're about to sign it but then it ends up <coughs> basically all for Carol to sign it, he had have to agree to basically make Rumpel King, I guess. All right. <laughs> oh, there, he's about to do it, and then it ends up changing it because it uh, basically, I'm assuming this was around when the first movie happened. I they don't even really make it clear, but I'm just the way it's set up, it seems like okay. So this must have been when the first movie is happening because he ends the Shrek ends up getting with Fiona, so Rumpel ends up. Turning into like a like a loser, uh, you know, drag out like you know, just he you know is seen as a joke. Uh, at this point, yeah, Shrek just hates his life now because he has no privacy, and that's basically Shrek's arc the whole movie, especially in the beginning. It's like anytime he's trying to get like some lonely time, he get you know he's taking a mud bath, he gets called because something happened with his kids. A donkey shows up, and yeah, so. And then his kid ha kids have a, and also his house is a tourist attraction, so he gets like zero privacy. They go to a um, birthday thing for their kids, and Shrek lashes out, lashes out at a Fiona, basically saying, "I wish I my life was what it was before." Rumple overhears this. I'm just gonna go through this quick because fuck this movie. Rumple follows him. Uh, manages to convince Shrek to like uh, to sign it, and and it just to me there was just nothing about. I'm gonna go in on um, on Rumpel for a bit. He just I don't know what actor they got, and I didn't look, but I just he didn't do it for me. There was nothing compelling about him. You know, his motive is basically just Charming's motive. That's it. And, and when he is, like, at the crux of the, when, when he's the villain, he just, the witches stood out more. He's just, he had an annoying voice, too. And it just, and I get it. In these movies, 
this, you know, this, these movies, the world is a comedy, so I'm not expecting the most amazing villain, but then you get a villain like Death and uh, Puss in Boots' Last Wish, which kind of puts that point to shame anyway. But, but like, up until this point, I I understand, I'm not expecting the, the best villains in the world. You know, they're kind of more comedic, but it's still, they still had something about them. Fairy Godmother was great. Farquaad was, you know, with jo the way John Lithgow voiced him, just every scene he was in, I was captivated. Same with Fairy Godmother, to be honest. And Charmy was decent as a villain of his own right, and it just, Rumpel's boring. I found him boring, honestly. So anyway, he forces Shrek to sign the thing. Everything changes. Now uh, all ogres are uh, basically... They're basically considered now enemies and targets now by, uh, fuck, Rumpel. I don't know why I forgot his name. He's just such a forgettable villain. I think that's why. But yeah, by uh, Rumpel. Shrek now is on his own. The Initially, you get a little montage, which I thought that, that scene was kind of funny, where he, he's back to being scary again, and he was like going through, the, going through far, far away, but which is now... All disheveled. He um Rumpel is king now, and yeah, just he has witches. Which I thought they were cool. They were kind of cool as antagonists. They end up kidnapping Trek. And this is where we get the, the our sighting of Donkey, who doesn't know Shrek at this point. They take him to Harold, and uh Shrek manages to free himself and take Donkey. And uh, so basically Shrek looking at the contract realizes to to basically undo everything. He has to get true love's kiss by midnight. So the other problem, they had to do that already in Shrek 2. It's kind of like, God damn, we're just reusing plots. Like, come on, man. You don't, like, do something different. Like, we're just reusing plots. Fucking Rumpel has the same motive as Charming and in this. Oh, he has to get true love's kiss by... Midnight, which we just did two movies ago. Ugh, anyway. So he runs into Fiona. And this is where we see the other ogres, which that was cool. I, I liked seeing the different ogres because, you know, we never really got to see that. Um, so that was cool, but that was like the only positive I really have. So Fiona initially obviously has, this is the boring part of the movie too, where it's like, he has to try to fall in love with her again. And it's like, I don't know, maybe they thought that would be an exciting plot line. Like, oh, let's have them fall in love with each other all over again. And it's like, man, I didn't need to see that. Anyway. So she initially doesn't like him, but then he has to get her to fall in love again. They plan on attacking um, Rumpel's, like, carriage or whatever that he's going to be using later. Rumpel hires, like, some, uh, some, uh, I can't think of the instrument. Flute player, flute player, who basically can mind control, because his flute can mind control anybody. And then we never see him again. Like, we see him at when they attack the ogres, which I'm just going to jump to that. The next scene is Shrek's trying to explain to Fiona what's going on while the other ogres are about to attack. <coughs> but... It turns out that Rumpel knew about it, and it was actually the the flute player who shows up, which mind controls the all the ogres, including Shrek and Fiona. They end up getting captured. Um, oh yeah, this is where yeah, Puss in Boots is owned by a by a Fiona, and it's fat now, and that's basically the joke. That's all Puss in Boots arc is in this movie is. I'm, especially when he's trying to, because in those, like, the first couple movies, when he slides, he's all fast and all sleek looking, and in this one, he's, like, fat, so it's, like, all slow, and it's, like, it was fine, like, the first time, maybe, if they just did two, but they did, it like, three or a couple of times, more than two, it was at least more than two, it was, it was, you got annoying after a while, to me, a gag like that, you gotta, you gotta place it, you gotta make the time time that perfectly because it, 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 it can just get to a point where it's just annoying and after a while it stops being funny. even if it's funny the first 
time or so. It can just be annoying when you spam it. And I think they spammed it a bit. So, Shrek Swish, so he ends up having his own contract, is basically for the other ogres to be freed while he and Fiona, and because he thought initially, because he thought initially that Fiona was safe, but the loophole was that Fiona's half ogre, not full ogre. So, and then you even have the same scene, similar to what Charming did, where Rumpel's gonna have a public, basically public execution of Shrek and Fiona. It's like, my God, like they, this movie just is a retread. We're just doing same plots from the other movies. So they end up getting saved. Uh, Fiona and not Fiona, Donkey and and Puss lead the other ogres in. We get a giant fight. We have the dragon shows up. And actually, is a bad guy this time, which I was cool to see the dragon be a villain this time around compared to the other one. World, they dragon gets defeated, Rumpel gets defeated, <coughs> and Fiona ends up kissing Shrek. Um, everything's back to normal now. Shrek realizes, oh, I was wrong, and you know what, my life isn't that bad. Whatever movie ends, fuck this movie. This. The fact that they just took a like the more I was thinking about me, like, especially that ending part, I'm like, so we're just gonna do the same type of public execution, just a little differently. But basically the same thing like what Charming was gonna do to Shrek. Granted, the only difference Fiona was there and it wasn't like a play like last time, but it was basically the same thing. It's he has the same motive as Charming. It's like they couldn't think of it. That is why I really believe this is a last second decision to make this movie, because the plot is so basic and just a lot of retreads from other movies. Rumple sucks as a villain. I just don't care for this one. I definitely don't recommend it. I'd almost say just end it at three. Three works as an ending, a solid ending. Three's not the best one, I'll agree. It's probably one of the weaker ones, but I can live with that being it for that world. You know, Arthur becomes king. Shrek and Fiona end up having a family. Happy ending. There you go. Because this one just does and it doesn't even really feel like it ends it, really. It feels like it tries. You know, he ends up, he's happy with his family. Then it goes to the fairy tale and it says, the end. But to me, the other one works better. To me, three is the canon ending. This doesn't exist. To me, there is no Shrek 4. The plot is so predictable. I was just, I was like, can't he just get back with his family? I fucking know where we're going. Yeah. They're like, the animation's good. That's about the only positive I really have is the anime. They, they definitely tried with the animation. They probably put all their money into that. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Fuck. Um, yeah, I can't really, the witches were decent. That's about it. Like, I only got like two things. It's just, this movie is just the nah. The nah for me. No for me, dog. I would probably give this one like a four or five out of ten. It just isn't good. So we'll. S I liked Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots is definitely way better than this. I didn't love it, but it's definitely way better than this movie. So that'll be my next one. I saw it the first time. I had. I. I it was like I had to watch it because I ended up watching uh, Last Wish, so it makes sense. I'm like I have to watch the first one, and I enjoyed it. I didn't love it, but it works as like a spin-off story so i'm gonna definitely we'll, we'll be watching that next friday and i'll try to review it on friday but if not then maybe saturday morning like this again but shrek 4 sucks don't watch it anyway i'll talk to y'all tomorrow with um because i'm gonna be seeing cocaine bear tonight so either tonight or early tomorrow sometime so it'd be one of the two but uh talk to y'all then either tonight either no oh, oh. I'll review it tomorrow. That's the plan. So, talk to y'all tomorrow. Um, take one more hit. Peace out. Anyway, fuck Joe Biden. Talk to y'all soon.